Okay, welcome to our last video in which we're going to talk a little bit about the second law of thermodynamics, heat flowing and entropy. But before we do, say hi to the PCAM student Schnitzel. Say, say hello. Come on. Say hello. Okay. Carnot's theorem and Carnot's work was one of the con main contributions to the development of the second law of thermodynamics. And the second law of thermodynamics, in terms of heat engine at least, says that heat will always flow from hot to cold and will never spontaneously flow from cold to hot. We can, of course, pump heat from cold to hot with the mechanical heat pump, but we'll never spontaneously have heat traveling from cold to hot. And, of course, if we think about the water wheel, we're never going to have water flowing from the low energy reservoir spontaneously up to the high energy reservoir. The second law of thermodynamics, or the idea of entropy, also states that the natural progression of things in the universe is to go from order to disorder. Now, if you think about what the world was like in the 1800s, this has a very profound impact on your understanding of the universe, an understanding of everything around you. All work at this time is done by steam power. All work is, f other than muscle power, other than muscle power, all work is fueled by a heat engine that's usually burning coal or burning wood. So let's think about a heat engine. Here's my locomotive's tender, and on the top of the tender, you can see a load of coal. Think about the coal. You've got a nice, orderly lump of coal with very low entropy. You've got nice carbon-carbon bonds arranged in a nice, regular structure. The entropy is very low. Then you release the heat in the coal by burning it. The heat flows from hot to cold. It does work along the way, but the heat flows from hot to cold. The entropy also increases, whereas before we had nice lumps of coal with regular carbon-carbon uh, bonds a few double bonds, a nice regular structure. Now we have carbon dioxide floating around and diffusing through the atmosphere. Extremely high entropy. So heat flows from order to disorder. Does work along the way. This enabled you, if you lived in the 1800s, to think about your world and how it, everything was working. The locomotives you saw on the railroad every day, the steam engine, the, the steamboat you saw on the river, the steam engine that was running the factory, it all now made sense. Heat goes from hot, l low entropy, to cold, high entropy. This also had an impact on people's philosophy or philosophical thinking because now for the first time people had a scientific prediction about how the universe was going to end. All of the heat that was contained in the high energy reservoirs, you and I, lumps of coal, the stars, was just going to diffuse throughout the universe, was just going to flow the entropy was going to increase. We were going to go from order to disorder. And just the heat would uh, just continue to expand until there was no heat anywhere left in the universe and no order anywhere left in the universe. This was called the heat death of the universe. Now, this was a nice theory that explains so much, but unfortunately it left out one very important process that people saw every winter and that was ice freezing. Now 
ice at water, when it freezes, gives off heat. Just like coal when it burns. When coal burns, it gives off heat. When water freezes, it gives off heat. But whereas coal has goes from high entropy, no, whereas coal goes from low entropy to high entropy, water goes from high entropy to low entropy. This was a problem. Until a man named Gibbs came along and used the Gibbs free energy to reconcile heat flow and entropy. This concludes my exploration of the historical context of the Carnot cycle. I hope you've enjoyed it and I certainly hope you found it useful. Please use the comments. My apologies for the reflection of the lights on my glasses and the less than perfect sound, but I do hope this gets you through what can be a very difficult time in your PCAM class and gives you a little bit of an appreciation for what was going on that led to the development of the Carnot cycle and why it became important.